Well, hello there, my crafters. Thanks for coming by. We're back in Diversity 2 again today. You should be well familiar with this series. I am pushing through this, guys. And uh, we're heading into the Escape Branch again. But we are going to be talking about the commands, the mechanics behind it. This is more for map makers or people who are interested in how the things pulled off. The last episode was my thought process, just for anybody who's kind of interested in why why I did the sort of stuff in that map, or uh, I say sort of a lot, I know. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's unintentional, but anyway, um, the last few episodes we talked about adventure, arena, trivia, and parkour, so definitely check those episodes out. I always say that, just want to recap and let you know where we are. Uh, and we've got uh, the rest of these branches to talk about, and I'm really getting excited because uh, we're going to be with the other builders. So anyway, into the escape branch, spoilers as always, guys, definitely play it before uh, before you've uh, watched this uh, I don't know why anyone would watch this uh, before they play it but anyway here we are as I said last time if you didn't see last episode definitely watch it but I talked about this last time it's sort of a cross between Indiana Jones and the old school adventure map um, and I tried to make it emulate uh, redstone instead of command blocks and I'm pretty happy with it um, one thing I should say is, you notice the quartz here, it always points to the hub, so we've got the different, uh, we got the different um, wool colors that go to each branch, and you'll see throughout at least this branch and some other branches, I kind of lace it with a uh, quartz block of some sort to indicate visually to the player that that's means the hub. Uh, I skipped over this last time, just wanted to quickly go over this. This is a uh, border here, it's all barrier blocks. And this interesting little thing here was actually created by um, Cold Fusion Gaming, which I'm not sure if he did that because I can't remember if I told him I wanted a border or he just came up with it. But I copied it over from his survival branch because I thought it's a great way to tell people, no, you can't play any further. You can't go any further that way. So uh, that's I, I think that's a really, really nice way to uh, close off a map. Uh, depending on what you want to do, a lot of people like to surround it with mountains you can't climb, but uh, depending on, I think, in the context, it'll work. I'm just going to go into uh, creative. So, as I said, this is uh, more of a technical episode, more for, I think, map makers. But uh, let's head in here. We've got, uh, oh yeah, by the way, there is a barrier block up here. <laughs> Love when people try to jump down. Uh, don't, you can't do that. Anyway, um, down here we've got the first bit of uh, danger, I guess. First trap or, or whatever. Um, and I don't, well, maybe I should go over this. In case you are curious in what's going on. Uh, ooh, it's getting dark. Uh, anyway, you should be able to see this. Uh, we have a mob spawner thing here. Now, I would suggest if you want to make custom spawners, which definitely spawners are not dead. They are have they have many uses apart from summon. They still have some great uses. Uh, take a look at this command. I'm not going to spend too much time into it, but uh, I will show you basically what's happening. Uh, we have a silverfish here, uh, and what I mean by take a look at is load up the map, break through the wall. Copy it down if you're a map maker, if you want to learn that sort of stuff. We've got some position here. These decimal points are very important. But basically it's telling uh, that that is the place where those silverfish, I want them to spawn um, at this 990.5. And then that's, this is the X, the Y, and the Z coordinate. And then we, we're only going to spawn one at a time. We're going to give them a spawn range of 20. So if the, if the silverfish is out of 20 uh, blocks away, then it will continue to spawn another one. Um, and then the player can be within 100 blocks uh, and the, the spawner will be active. In regular survival, I believe it's um, 16 blocks, but with custom spawners, you can alter that. Uh, it's got a delay of one, which is extremely short, so it will constantly spawn the silverfish uh, up to uh, an amount of 10. So uh, within that range of, what was it, was it 20? I think it was 20. Uh, we can have up to 10, and then as soon as one silverfish leaves, uh, then we are only going to allow, um, we're going we're to allow another one. So there's always going to allow uh, 10 maximum in the range. Now, uh, I'm just going to quickly go over this because it's the same as all my doors in this level, or in this uh, branch. I've actually uh, kind of 
tricked it into being... I'm just going to go uh, difficulty P to quiet them up. Uh, I've I've done this in a lot. I've tricked it, tricked the player into thinking it's redstone, and that's mostly just easy easier for me. Uh, it's got a fill command here. I'm filling it with. Uh, oh, this is the this is the opposite one. No, this is the okay. So I'm filling it with redstone blocks and replacing uh, clay. So over here, it's going to take any clay block and replace it with redstone if we activate that lever and it makes it look like there's red like it's a survival redstone uh, redstone thing so as soon as i do that opposite way and that's uh that's mostly because i was thinking in that egyptian thing egyptian civilization like in the last episode i talked about you'd want them to sort of be able to turn off and on those uh things so it does the opposite here i use that a lot a lot in this branch actually in in many things i use that and then this little interesting thing here is so that uh silverfish can't jump up there they also can't jump up to uh this spot here and again, I've done the same thing. You'll see over here this button, what I just uh, explained down there with the lever. It does the same thing, except it's just a one way. So we've got one, uh, it replaces uh, um, any redstone blocks with clay over, where are they? Where are they? Over here. It replaces, uh, I've got to be careful not to break <laughs> the important stuff, uh, these redstone blocks with clay. And it also, I believe it changes difficulty. Uh, yeah, so that you don't get the silverfish sound and you do not get hungry. Now, uh, I had somebody ask me about why why the peaceful and all that, or how do you stop hunger? Uh, keep keep your players in peaceful if you want to stop hunger. Otherwise, you'll have to do some sort of saturation effect or give them food. Uh, the easiest way is definitely change it to peaceful. Hit this button, and there we go. We're, we're opened there, <laughs> and we can get down. Now, as I said before, there's the quartz block indicating return to the hub. Now, uh, this is another tip for map makers. How I've talked about in the past, um, keeping your map resettable. Uh, this is what I've done here. When they hit this button, they not only go back, they also clone in what I need to clone in, which is this uh, chest here. So clone is a really easy command rather than having to learn um, the MBT, you know, fill and a book and all that in one huge command. You could just put the object there, make it a clone, and then when they press the button, they will uh, actually, in this case, they will clone that in first and then they will uh, teleport back. Is there anything else that happens? I don't know. There might be. No, I guess it's just those two. It clones that in, and what's this one? That's okay, blank command block. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it clones this in just in case they took the book and they left, and then they came back, and uh, I think actually I saw, I think I saw somebody do that, and I wanted to change that. Uh, just in case they left the book alone there. So let's uh, move along here. Let's move along. Uh, so, as I said last time, I blew this all apart with uh, TNT, and uh, that's to make it look like the old style of map, obviously. Uh, up here, we have the creeper face. Uh, this is, um, some people call it a jeb door, a flush door, a, uh, I don't know what else, a hidden door, but it's that whole thing where the pistons pull it out and pull it out again. And uh, it is done with command blocks. Uh, like I did down there to make it look like redstone. But um, a normal Jeb door, I think it's called, uh, you would see the sides of the pistons, and I definitely didn't want to, to see that. So I made him, them actually replace. Now, I don't think we can actually see it. I don't think we can see it because of um, because of the way it is, but uh, because of the view there. But I'll show you what's happening down here. There's actually quite a few command blocks. Um, and you can see here when they get turned on, uh, these, they're, tur these torches here are turning on these command blocks, which are, uh, just, I guess they are changing, uh, depending on which direction you want those pistons. And then when they turn it on here, the opposite way, they turn the torches off. So it's, it's sort of like a, it's, it's like a, uh, an on-off switch that does multiple things, even though a lever can do that, but you can toggle it off and on. Um, and I don't think we have a lot of time to go through every single command, but again, I always say, just 
bust through the map. You, if you watch the video and you want to bust through it and see what all these commands are, and I'm happy to uh, explain in more depth in comments and all that sort of thing, but this will give you an idea of how that's done. Uh, but I uh, definitely wanted to hide those other pistons that are right. Normally you'd have pistons that would look like this, and I thought that would be, whoop, not like that, I thought that would be really, really, really ugly. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's move up here and we'll go to this. I really, really love this little trap here. I'm losing it close there. Boom. And I've talked about this many, many times, this little technique here. I really need to get some, uh, I need to get some light here. Let me get some torches. Uh, could give myself night vision, but <laughs> let me get some torches just so you guys can see. There we go. So what's happening is we have this, uh, we have this, um, XP or XP mob spawner. Uh, this is created, as far as I know, by Jesper. I always credit him with that because I don't know anybody who does that. Um, but anyway, uh, you can see here we're going to um, we're going to create a oh where is it um, XP? Did I already skip it? No, there we go. Entity ID XP orb. Uh, what it's doing is it's setting this orb on this pressure plate. Now watch. As soon as I get out of range, it turns that off. When I get in range. It activates this command block, which again does that uh, sort of wireless redstone. You can see these, these, uh, yeah, there we go. See, they all change. There we go. As soon as we get in range, uh, and that, you know, that's not quite the old school method. This is here, obviously, just to trick the player for looks. That's not the old school method. That is player detection. But I needed a really good way to hide it. And uh, I think that does does really well. It's pretty accurate. Um, and then obviously when you get out of range, you can see it resets there. So that's how that one works. It's the same as um, over here. Same thing. So you can see that there. Oh, yeah. You can't see that. Let me just get, shed some light on the issue. Why don't I light up my maps behind here? Uh, yeah, there we go. And I love this little method. I can't say enough about it. All right, here we are in the main sort of trap hub room thingy, I guess. Uh, this obviously opens the doors. Now, one interesting thing, if you watch this redstone, uh, because of bud switches, and uh, if you're not a map maker, bud switches are basically glitches. They are glitches dealing with pistons that don't let them close or open, but uh, Mojang... Mo Yang uh, um, uh, decided to keep them in based on some popular YouTubers. Uh, you, they they don't really pull in and out properly. So if you watch closely, watch this, you'll see it changes to clay very quickly and then back to redstone. Uh, you have to do that if you want to move redstone. Otherwise, the top ones will interfere with the bottom ones. Um, but just like before with uh, that wireless redstone, it's it's happening back here. Uh, you can see, I don't, I don't know how to do it without breaking these blocks. Uh, let's just show you. There, you can see right here it's changing that block to clay and redstone. And let me just do that. And that's happening with every single one. That's why there's so many command blocks back here. Uh, because it's changing all of these. Oh boy, man, that's tough. Okay, can buy it without breaking anything. I don't really want to break it uh, just so it messes you up. But break open the wall yourself and you can uh, check it out. I always make a backup just in case. But uh, I've, I've activated there and then deactivated it with this other torch here. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's pretty straightforward. I want to show you this part here before we get into uh, some, of the, some of the other traps there. Uh, this is the main brain of it you can see here. Uh, let me just break this out so you can see it better. You can see there's that Yesperian item spawner or XP orb clock thing when you come in range. Uh, down oh, with the pumpkins. Somebody asked me about pumpkins, and it's basically just uh, a block you can pay, place redstone dust on, uh, but uh, it's, it's lit up so you can actually see when you're working on it. But anyway, the way this works, when you come in range, and that's so that you don't have a clock running all the time, uh, it's going to activate this. These are testing for the onks. Um, so I talked about that last time, the gold block and the redstone block. Here, 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 and here. And when it has one, it's going to set block a clay block over here. This is an AND gate similar to the one in the arena branch. Uh, basically, 
They all have to be clay in order for this to shut off, and then it will activate these commands. And then uh, back, back here, uh, we have, well, I don't know what those set, set to air. Oh, I know what they do. Uh, when you, <laughs> when you uh, break something, let me just show you. Let me get a gold, uh, I know what I can do. Here we go. When I get a gold block, uh, I'm going to set it here. Watch this block, it will actually disappear and pulls it in. So it's setting the air there. And then it's uh, setting a, uh, what's it doing? Is it setting a redstone block here? I actually, I can't remember what it's doing back here. Actually, it might be replacing that. I think it's replacing that piston. Yeah, it's replacing that piston. Um, must be underneath here, I guess. There we go. Ah, yes, it's replacing the piston that's in there. With I talked about this in I think the second episode with a extended piston, so it's replacing a regular piston. It's remove well first it's removing the middle block, replacing that regular piston with an extended piston, and because it's extended, it automatically pulls it back. The other thing that's happening is it's changing these blocks to clay, and then that one will go, and then eventually that one will go, and you'll see we'll do it. Uh, we'll do it with. Uh, a better view here. I'm going to grab this. I'm not sure which one I actually removed, uh, but here we go. So if you watch, it'll remove those blocks and pull this, uh, let the sand fall down. Uh, oh, come on. Oh, dang it. Dang it. Come on. Pull it in, man. Pull it in. I don't know. Oh, oh, that's why. Aha. You need to have a connection there. There we go. Oh, here we go. There we go. Pulled that in. And then the final one, just so we can see it. Come on, baby. Uh, final one here. There. Let me see that. And eliminates that. And now you can uh, walk through there. Well, I took a look at the uh, time for this uh, for this branch here. And it's getting quite a bit long. So I'm splitting this, um, this mechanics into actually two episodes. So check out next episode because I'm going to be continuing on with uh, some of the traps here. And then we're going to go downstairs, downstairs <laughs> to the lower section and look at the uh, the skull flip, the item frame skull puzzle. And we're also going to be looking at, um, at the end uh, uh, pharaoh guy who pops out. So uh, stay tuned for that, guys. Thanks so much for sticking around with this series. I will see you next time. Enjoy your Minecrafting.